Welcome all to the next episode in a new mini-series on this channel, focusing on parallels between Animal Crossing and the Mother Earthbound series. Last time, I showed off my New Horizons island Tane Tane, and its many elements I've based on Mother 3. This time though, instead of wandering the art exhibit, we're moving over to the fossil display, because this video will be a history lesson in how the two series are conceptually connected. I'll start out by discussing Mother creator Shigesato Itoi's absolute love for Animal Crossing, and how he may have inadvertently conceived the idea for it while dreaming up his own scenarios a quarter of a century ago. I'll then have some fun discussing every time his series may have been referenced in the Animal Crossing universe. First of all, it's no secret that Itoi loves Animal Crossing. Up until a couple of years after the launch of New Leaf, his company, Hobonichi's website, Almost Daily Itoi News, had a big section celebrating the release of every Animal Crossing game, with most of his employees participating by keeping personal blogs of their experiences. Satoru Iwata, the executive producer for all Animal Crossing titles until his untimely death in 2015, worked together with Itoi, his very close friend in promoting each game on the site by means of interviews. And in those interviews, some juicy details are revealed. Adults, children, and even your older sister is the tagline for Mother 2. It was advertised in a clean slate sort of way, that encouraged all different types of people, even those that may have given up on video games as a hobby in the past, like Itoi's own sister, and how he came up with the line to try and enjoy. This slogan proved to be critical advice for Iwata as he became Nintendo's president. That inclusivity Itoi focused on, coming from a personal place, motivated Iwata, and by extension, the company's mindset for years to come, with their goal of a new direction for Nintendo, to broaden gaming's demographic, a proposal that produced monumental success in the Wii and DS era. Iwata brought all this information to light through these conversations with Itoi, who pointed out that Mother 2's everybody can play mentality is quite clear in Animal Crossing. Iwata even brought up that in Mother 2, Ness's father calling him every couple of hours in game, telling him to take a break, was the basis for the Wii recording overall playtime. It's why a similar mechanic began cropping up in many games from around that time, and it's still used today. So, it's clear certain aspects of Mother 2 had provided the direction Iwata was taking the company, but the series' connections to Animal Crossing didn't stop there. Iwata again drew parallels to Mother 3 in a later interview, pointing out that the many original ideas Itoi had for Mother 3 when he first envisioned the game share things in common with Animal Crossing. Itoi agreed, explaining that the format of RPGs at the time of Mother 2's release were all akin to road movies, where the main character would travel to one town after the next without looking back. And if the player were to go out of their way to visit a previous town, the story there was already completed, so its inhabitants had nothing to say except, hey, long time no see. Because of this standard game developers were expected to follow, Itoi wanted to craft a convention-breaking RPG in which you stay in just one major town that changes over a period of time, with character dialogue and actions affecting the next day. While Shigeru Miyamoto likened the concept to The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, Iwata compared it most to Animal Crossing, stating it to be the realization of Itoi's idea. And if you don't interpret that as Iwata suggesting we have Mother 3's creation to thank for Animal Crossing, it all seems to circle back to the mind of Itoi anyway. To elaborate, Cabbage, a project headed by Itoi, Pokemon producer Tsunekazu Ishihara, and Miyamoto himself, was an unreleased 64 disk drive breeding simulation game, sharing many functionalities with, you guessed it, Animal Crossing. The player would care for their cabbage creature, with gameplay revolving around the system's internal clock affecting the creature's growth. There was planned connectivity with a Game Boy, visitation to other pet owners' worlds, events your creature could partake in, and even extra game sets to be released for it to interact with, like the Nintendo e-reader, and then later its spiritual successor, 
amiibo cards for use in Animal Crossing. Miyamoto stated in 2006 that while Cabbage was never brought to fruition, many design elements of the disappeared game influenced other titles. Nintendogs used as a concrete example, like it was obvious. Based on this statement and the unquestionable similarities between the two, it's easy to discern that this concept, which Itoi again had a hand in, could have easily provided the basis for Animal Crossing, and or influenced certain aspects of future games in the series. Staying inside the head of Itoi, but getting back to Mother, it's known the series will remain a trilogy. Though its spirit, at least, is still going on strong within Animal Crossing. What could I possibly mean by that? Well, Itoi has assured us fans many times that he will not be making a fourth game in the Mother series, but offers the odd sentiment that Animal Crossing can be seen as Mother 4, among other vague metaphorical suggestions like this hypothetical sequel being the very lives we're leading now. That in a way makes sense considering how Mother 3 ended by actually incorporating the player as a character, but with that interpretation, Mother 4 would indisputably be the worst one in the series, so I just like to think it's Animal Crossing. Fans, myself included, have sort of taken the reins on this idea by bringing the world of Mother to this creativity-igniting life sim. But with how closely the two series are linked, are there any homages to Itoi's trilogy from the developers themselves throughout the years? Whether it's collectible items or simple sound effects, there's no shortage of callbacks to other Nintendo properties in Animal Crossing. But for all the expected 1-Up Mushrooms and Master Swords, Nintendo's always given one character in particular dialogue with some deeper cut references. Gulliver, the amnesiac seagull, misremembers fighting sea snakes at Pinnacle Rock in the GameCube version. And while the mask itself was made to be a wearable item later on, this references a sequence only someone who's actually played through Majora's Mask would understand. Funny that game is relevant again in this video. In New Leaf, as a later example, he'll deliriously ask if he's in the Over There, which is the equivalent to Heaven in the Paper Mario universe, introduced in the underloved Wii game. Those are just a couple of many clear shoutouts to specific titles Nintendo enthusiasts would appreciate but I want to focus on a line in that same 3DS game where Gulliver can say, quote, Oh man, this sure is a fuzzy pickle. I'm in way over my head here, unquote. Is that a reference to the cameraman from Earthbound? He's a super memorable part of the game, and his catchphrase has become iconic within the fandom. In the Japanese version, aka Mother 2, the cameraman says, Say cheese sandwich, before snapping his pictures instead. Yeah. So Fuzzy Pickles was a chosen expression for the game's localization. It's a silly old American photography term, and believe it or not, is still used in the professional field today. I'm a school photographer for my real job outside of YouTube, and while I can't show it here, I was surprised to find that the phrase was actually in my training manual as an example of how to get your subjects to smile. However, this is still very likely an Earthbound homage because it isn't really a term you'd hear otherwise. And considering the character, who recently called back to Star Tropics by the way, an obscure game like Earthbound that has a sizable cult following. Another maybe unintentional reference is the opening of Rockin' KK, which sounds markedly similar to the hippie battle theme from Mother 1 Earthbound Beginnings and the New Age Retro Hippie slash Frank Fly's background music from the second game. The songs themselves are, in turn, based on the opening of Johnny Be Good by Chuck Berry, which is how the riff could be coincidental, but I'm again confident it isn't, because it's combined with the fact that the rockin' part of Rockin' KK is Ness's default favorite thing and signature psi move from his game. KK Rockabilly, Technopop, Dirge, Cafe, and Two Days Ago all have Earthbound vibes too, so a lot of the music in the games are similar. In that sense, and I guess in general, one could make even more comparisons. The writing shares a quirky, sentimental, and sometimes dark sense of humor. Mother's signature gift boxes are nearly identical to Animal Crossing's presence. The focus on extraterrestrial life 
It all comes together, but if you still aren't convinced the two are connected, it's hard to deny a lot of the smaller similarities that make these games great. And whether or not it's because of those similarities, it's been incredible seeing just how many people are fans of both. These communities coming together to share stories and art based on the works that inspire us. That wraps things up for today, but you all know I'm not done talking about either of these franchises. I might do a future episode for this miniseries combining the two. I do have a bit more I can discuss, like Itoi's bizarre approach to playing Animal Crossing, which surprisingly reveals his inner Porky, but I have many more projects planned in the meantime, such as a long overdue Dark Aspects. Real quick before I leave though, for more information on Iwata's leadership, former president at Nintendo of America, Reggie fils discussed the topic recently for episode 26 of the Present Value podcast. It's an awesome listen, so I'll link it in the description. But with that, thank you all, happy Mother's Day, and I'll see you next time.